Hi everyone, I'm Jeff Monroe from Middlebury and I have made it to the end of the collector's tour in 2024. This is it, the last collector, it's Dust 17, uh, but it's the 20th collector in the order in which I did them this year. The last uh, 18 days, I have been to 20 different dust collectors, driven 2,800 miles, hiked, I don't know how many miles, climbed, many thousands of, of vertical feet and i made it to all of them um, every collector was right where we left it uh, every collector still had a data logger connected to it every collector had a lot of dust in it and i emptied them all and i um, reset them to run um, through this coming winter and into next year so it's a great feeling i got to admit uh, there were i wouldn't say there were times i wasn't sure if i was going to do it um, but there were times where it seemed like a lot so it feels really great to have made it to the end like this. Uh, Dust 17, I'm on the roof of the Science Center at Brigham Young University in Provo, Utah. Um, so similar to Dust 10, which I visited yesterday at the University of Utah in Salt Lake City, the idea here was to have a collector which would um, sample dust in an urban environment, in a, in a developed environment. And it was also a useful place to deploy Dust 17 because my colleague, Greg Carling from Brigham Young uh, has a variety of other dust sampling equipment in operation on this roof. Passive samplers, active samplers, kind of a multi, multi-year data set from a bunch of different collector types. So in the early days of the Dust Square project, this was another easy idea. Let's put one of my passive samplers in a location where it can overlap with the work of my colleagues on the Dust Squared project. So uh, really quite successful in that regard, and I look forward to getting back to the lab with, with this and all of the other samples to see what we can learn from the dust that accumulated during the 23 to 24 calendar year. Um, lots of thank yous in my head here um, as we reach the end of the big tour. I wanna to thank um, Tony Desitel and Amy McMahon back at Middlebury who built all of these collectors, turned my, my crazy idea into a reality. Thanks to both of them. Thank you to Andrew Castle with Haunted Desk who has made these engaging and creative videos from all of the raw content that I've been sending him from the field. Thank you, Andrew. Um, thanks again to all the land management agencies that have been um, so supportive of the project and have let me deploy these collectors um, for many, many years in some cases. Thanks, of course, to all the students from Middlebury who helped me deploy collectors or were with me in other seasons when I've gone back to empty them. So folks like Emily Atwood and, and Sam O'Keefe and Paul Quackenbush and Noah Stone, um, Luna Wasson, Atticus Proctor, Ryan McElroy, Emmett Norris, Pratt Olson, uh, Elsa Sodisrum, Shane Lusk, and Abby Santis off the top of my head. Those are folks that I know have done big field seasons with me to visit these collectors in the past. Thanks to all of them. Thank you to the National Science Foundation for their support of the Dusk Wear project. Thanks to all of my colleagues on the Dusk Wear project that have made this sprawling, complicated, multi-year investigation of dust and its role in the critical zone uh, so interesting, so engaging and exciting, and frankly, so fruitful. Um, and I guess most importantly, thanks to you for watching any or all of these videos. It's been a lot of fun to produce these along the way, and it's been even more fun to know that some people are actually watching them. Hopefully I've told you a little bit about why dust is an important thing to consider. I've certainly brought you to some beautiful places as I promised. Thanks for being along for the ride and uh, we'll see you next time. Take care.